Isn't it just typical when you use something for a while and then you don't use it for a while and you put it away in a drawer and then after a few months or so you think oh, I'm not going to use that again and you throw it away and then the day after you throw it away <laughs> you need it. Yeah that's happened to me. Um, I used to have one of those round circular USB lights that I used to use uh, above my desk as an infill light um, and then I got rid of it when I got the strip light that goes across the top of the desk. I put it in a drawer and then the other day when I was clearing out I thought I'm not going to use that again so I dumped it. Now I realise I actually need it because I could use it at my desk here rather than over there because on a night when I come upstairs when the blind is down or it's dark outside there's not enough light facing forward here so I could do with it facing forward to light up my countenance <laughs> um, in an evening. So it's Thursday evening. Um, Ian and I have been out all day today. Uh, we've been down in Redford at Indigo Blue um, having a new product meeting today. Um, so we've been discussing um, stencils and laser cut MDF projects and new stamp designs. Um, and also a new signature range of stamps from me through Indigo Blue. Um, so we've been discussing that today. So we got back at about six o'clock-ish. Um, had something to eat because we're absolutely starving. Um, took the boys out and then came back. And I'm just catching up on emails and that kind of stuff today. Um, so I just thought I'd just jump on. Um, and say hello for Thursday. Um, yeah, and then wonder what the heck has happened. I must have thrown out because I can't find it anywhere. So it looks like I'm going to have to buy a new one, doesn't it? Come on, kiddo. So everybody knows that Ian and I have got a love for um, the arts and crafts movement, uh, William Morris, and that kind of era, um, pre, yeah, pre Art Deco. <laughs> so everything before Art Deco. Um, one of the other designers that Ian and I both admire from that period in history is a chap called Archibald Knox. Now, Archibald Knox was responsible for um, that kind of Art Nouveau Celtic revival back in, in that kind of period, around about 19, 1910, um, going up to the beginning of the 20s. Um, and designed a lot of products for a, a company here in the UK called Liberties. Now, Liberties of London is one of those really high class kind of like department stores that have been around forever. If you've ever been to London, um, you probably will have been to Liberties. So um, recently I've kind of been getting back into like, doing a lot of Celtic design work for uh, my friend Karen because we've been doing a lot of pagan Celtic kind of Wiccan stuff products for her. Um, and I kind of thought I could do with getting some Archibald Knox um, style designs or resources for inspiration. So I purchased this, the designs of Archibald Knox for Liberty & Co. It's a really nice, um, thick, book and it was fairly inexpensive um but unfortunately um i'm really disappointed because the quality of the photographs in the book is not very good it's not very good at all um some of the photographs are so dark as to be um almost useless so I don't often 
send things back. But I think I'm going to in this case. I mean, come on. They're just really bad. So yeah, I think it's going back. I bought it directly from the publisher, not from Amazon or anywhere like that. Um, so I'm just going to return it and just basically say the quality of the publication is not, you know, it's not good enough. And I'll keep on looking for something else. <laughs> so it's Saturday afternoon, just half past three. And the afternoon sun is right in my eyes. Actually, has it gone off now? Almost. It's still quite bright. I can't look at that out the window just yet. Um, sun's starting to go down. Uh, Ian's just taking the boys out. Um, and I've just finished my mission inspiration project for this week. So the prompt for week four was linear. Da, 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 there we go. Um, and my art journal page was, for me, all about that linear journey from cradle to grave. Or cut up in a linear way. Um, yeah, so that will be going live at 8.30 this evening, hopefully. Um, once I've finished editing and getting it uploaded to YouTube. So, yes. Um, I've just had a lovely email conversation with somebody, um, a lady from the United States, um, who's concerned about postal prices, as everybody is these days. Um, it's January, so I'm not sure whether or not the terminal due prices for um, international postage have already been negotiated and settled for 2024 yet. So I'm not sure whether or not the post prices will go up again. I don't think they are going, so I think it has already been done. So postal prices for me to send stuff out to the States, I think are pretty much fixed now. I don't think they'll be going up again. Um, fingers crossed. Um, all postal prices affect not only you guys uh, having to pay for postage <laughs> or contributing to postage, um, but obviously for us as well, because, you know, sometimes when you order a parcel, um, the postage price that we charge you doesn't necessarily cover the full amount of how much it costs to actually send it. And um, the way that we work it, that sometimes um, it's like swings and roundabouts, really. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. So it does kind of balance itself out in the long run. And um, we've always worked on the principle of around about 15 to 17 percent of the value of the order is around about what you would normally pay postage for it. That's the way it's worked for the last couple of years. Um, it's kind of a non-exact formula, if you like. Um, sometimes it's a lot higher, sometimes it's a lot lower. It just depends on what's actually in the parcel itself because it's all done on volume and weight. Um, and obviously, if you're ordering a lot of wood and woodology stuff, woodology, um, the laser cuts, then obviously the weight is a lot higher than if you were ordering mylar or paper. Um, so, like I said, it swings in roundabouts. It's just one of those things. And the best way, if you're unsure about ordering off my website and you're unsure about what the postage is going to be, um, you can always add things to your basket. And you can always um, obviously put your um, origin point in where you are in the US or in Sweden or in Germany or in Australia or New Zealand or Japan or India or wherever um put stuff in your basket go through the checkout process um, until the postage is calculated um and if it's too high you know and it's too much then you have at that point that option to go back you don't have to continue with the actual purchase you can literally just abandon your shopping cart if you want to um i don't do what a lot of companies do and chase after people who have abandoned carts. Um, so, you know, it doesn't make any difference to me whether you abandon your cart or not. And um, if you're just doing it just to find out how much something's going to cost for postage, then that's great. Because for me, it's a tool that you guys can use to work out how much the postage is going to be. So you might want to, for example, if you want to order something, but you can't afford it right now, but you want to save up for something, then or you'd want to know how much it's going to cost for postage. So you can put money to one side at the end of the month 
then that's a great way of doing it. Go to the website, put stuff in the basket, go through that checkout process, find out how much the postage is going to be, and then abandon your cart. At least you'll know how much the postage will be and how much it's going to be in total. Um, you can then, if you want to convert, the only difference is in converting it from pounds into your, your local currency, which you can do through Google. If you just do a currency converter on Google, you can you can find out how much it's going to be. But that exchange rate may go up, may go down during that period before you actually do put your order in. But the tools are there if you want to use them. It's a little bit breezy this morning. <laughs> and Mike's all wrapped up. Nipper's got his, his coat on. And Bentley's got his coat on. So where are we going today then, Mike? Hunston Bridge. Elaborate. Trans-Pennine Trail from Penistone, which is where Mum and Dad live, um, towards Manchester. It's a fair hike. We're not walking to Manchester. No, but that way. Oh, right. <laughs> Onward and upward then. Monday morning, uh, just gone 10 30. I've not gone to see mum and dad today because we went yesterday and took the dogs for the walk. Um, so I don't need to go today, but I'm so glad because the weather today is blooming awful. It's cold and wet and miserable definitely miserable um, but still have to do jobbies so off to the post office to do website orders and then after that got to nip down to the supermarket grab some more dog food but also I'm going to make an appointment with the opticians to have my eyes tested because it's over two years since I last had mine done but also mum needs to have hers done, hers done as well so I'm going to try and book an appointment for both of us at the same time well not the same time one after the other if you know what I mean but on the same day at least anyway that's the plan for today. Right. So that's post office done. Dog food and grocery shopping done. An appointment for eye tests all booked. So I've been able to book mum in first and then me straight after for next Wednesday so that's good it's Tuesday Ian's at work Mr Nick's fast asleep on the on the couch curled up in a tight little ball <laughs> anybody think it was cold in here um, heating is on um, so, 
been trying to get ready for or do more kind of work for um, my friend Karen. Um, so been laser cutting or engraving um, some of the pendulum boards um, that she wanted me to do for her. So that's one. So that's the all seeing eye on the circle. And then she's asked me to do um, the seal of the archangels on an octagon, eight sided. And then my personal favorite, uh, the green man on a circle. So these are about eight inches, um, just shy of eight inches. So there's that one. And then another one of my favorite ones which is the, the, the which is not, again, on an octagon. So I've been engraving those for her today. Um, she's getting ready for the launch of her new website. Um, she, she wasn't really sure about when to launch her website. So I said to her, why don't you just do a tarot reading? Why don't you just pull a card or do a three card spread with your tarot cards? and then just pick one at random. And whatever number that card is, whether it's major or minor arcana, um, they will have a number. And whatever the number is, is the date that you launch on. So <laughs> she said, well, that's a really good idea. I'll go and do that. So she did, and then a few minutes later, she sent me a photograph. Um, the dog had picked the card and it was of death, number 13. Um, now, death doesn't mean death. Death just means new beginnings. It means the start of a new venture, the start of something new. It could be anything, new relationship, new job, uh, the start of a journey, something like that. Um, but for her, obviously, it's the start of a new venture uh, with this new website. And the death card is number 13. So she's going to be launching a website on the 13th of February. So those of you that were interested in some of the bits and pieces that I've shown you over the past few months, the acrylic earrings, the pendants, um, all that kind of stuff um, will all be on the website, um, which there will be a link on my website. So I'll also put a link in the description area below here as well. And um, like I said, it's not launched yet. There's nothing there just yet, but it will be on um, February the 13th. And I'll just check to see what date, that, what day of the week that actually is. It will be a Tuesday. So there you go. Um, yeah, it's all exciting stuff. Over the past few weeks or so, I've been playing a lot more, um, excuse me for tidying up while I'm talking to you. I've been playing a lot more with my um, jelly plates, um, just mainly because um, I haven't been using it. I haven't used it for a long time. And it it does uh, give you some really good results for, for background papers, for collage and other stuff um, in your art journals or, or on your card making, even if you like mixed media cards. Um, and also for, you know, for creating some nice textured pages for junk journals and that kind of stuff. Um, but I've recently been thinking... Um, all, most of the stencils that I've got are all kind of very geometric. They're all very um, illustrative, if you like. Uh, they're all patterns, um, you know, like quatrefoils and diamonds and, and and scales and damask patterns. And they're all very regular, you know, like this kind of thing. All very um, in a row and all tidy and neat. And I thought, well, what we really could do with is some nice grungy kind of irregular masks for dropping onto a jelly plate so that's what I've been working on I've been working on some designs for masks specifically for use with kind of like a jelly plate and this is the first one that I've come up with so it's literally just a grid line or a grid section but with it being a mask you can lay that down and then you can do your pull and then it will leave that behind on the jelly plate and you can add that as a texture layer and of course you can do it whichever way around you want to do that so there's 
you know you can do it that way you can do it that way <laughs> um which is really cool so i'm really i'm really liking that so i can't wait to play with that one and um, so that one's called abstract grunge grid but also not only but also um i've done this one as well which is a scribble it's literally just a scribble which will also give you, well, apart from it being more circular and more flowing, um, it is very random, very irregular um, and quite grungy. And again, you could do with that whichever way around you wanted to do it. I mean, take your pick. There's all sorts of different ways you could do that. You could lay it down, um, you know, any which way you want. In fact, it almost looks like there's a face in the middle as well there. <laughs> um, so there's that one as well. So that one's called Abstract Grunge Scribble. So there are available. I'm going to hopefully get those on the website this afternoon. Um, since I've got these two prototyped, they work. Um, they're pretty um, robust. They're not flimsy. Um, you know, they're, they're kind of sturdy. 350 G, 350 micron mylar. So they're quite sturdy stencils and will stand up to a lot of punishment um yeah so i'm going to try and get those on the website today so and then i've got all weekend to play with them yay i'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible and don't forget you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website there's a link in the description area below thank you